Welcome. Let's take a look at an application of indefinite integrals. This time we're looking at a car braked with a constant deceleration of 16 feet per second per second, producing skid marks measuring 200 feet before coming to a stop. What we want to know is how fast was the car traveling when the brakes were applied? So let's just take a moment and think about this context. We have a car. There's my car. And it hits the brakes. And we'll say it hits the brakes at time zero. And once it hits the brakes, it travels a distance of 200 feet. So there's the 200 feet that the um, car travels. Now we don't know uh, when the car actually stops. Let's call that time t equals f for final. So the final time. Okay. What do we know about that final time? We know the velocity when t is equal to f. The car has stopped, so its velocity will be zero. And if we're measuring the distance it travels uh, while it's braked, then its position starts here at zero, so we know that the position at time zero is zero, and it hits the brakes, it travels this 200 feet, and so its position at time f for final is 200 because it's traveled that 200 feet. Now we're being asked how far the car was traveling when the brakes were applied. That means we don't know how fast the car was traveling at time zero. So the velocity at time zero we don't know. We'll just call that v sub zero. So this represents velocity at time zero. Okay, so what else do we know? We know that the car braked with a constant deceleration of 16 feet per second per second. So constant deceleration, that's going to tell us that the acceleration in this instance is negative 16. And from there, we should be able to determine how fast the car was traveling when the brakes were applied. So we know that acceleration is the derivative of velocity. So velocity should be the antiderivative of acceleration. And in this particular instance, our acceleration is six, negative 16 dt. So our velocity should be the antiderivative of negative 16 dt. So our velocity function should be negative 16 t plus constant of integration. Now we have some information that we could use to help us find that constant of integration. We know that velocity at time zero is some velocity. It's the initial velocity, and let's go ahead and use that to characterize our constant of integration. So using that velocity at time zero equals v naught, we get negative 16 times zero plus c, so evaluate our velocity at t equals zero, and this should end up being v naught. Uh, negative 16 times 0 is 0, so c is equal to v naught. So our velocity function for our car 
is simply negative 16t plus this unknown initial velocity. Now, fortunately, we have more information here. Uh, we know that the initial position is uh, at time 0 is 0. We also know that our initial position at some final time is 200. Also that our velocity at that final time is 0. So what we can do is we can continue on and find our position function. Now we know that velocity is the derivative of position. So we can say then that our position function, our s of t, is the antiderivative of negative 16t plus this constant that represents our initial velocity, but we don't yet know what that is, dt. Now, finding our antiderivative here, s of t is going to be negative 16 times t squared over 2 plus, remember v naught is a constant, it's that initial velocity that we don't know yet, so it's going to be v naught times t. So think about taking the derivative of this constant v naught times t. If I take the derivative of that term, I will get simply v naught. And then position is going to have its own constant of integration. We'll call that c. Now the 2 and the 16 can simplify to give us a negative 8. So our position function now is negative 8t squared plus v naught times t plus our constant of integration. So let's go ahead and use what we know about the initial position of the car. That is, at time 0, at t equals 0, the position of the car is 0. That's the moment it hits the brakes, and it has not yet traveled any distance. So its initial position is 0. So evaluating our position function at 0, we get negative 8 times 0 squared plus v naught times 0 plus c, and that's supposed to equal 0. Well, negative 8 times 0 squared is 0, plus v naught times 0, that's 0. So we end up with c equals 0. So our position function, s of t, is negative 8t squared plus v naught times t, and that constant was 0. So at this point, we have our velocity function, and it contains this initial velocity that we don't know, and our position function, which also contains this initial velocity that we don't know. Now notice that we do have some additional information that we have not yet used. That is, that the velocity at time f is 0, and then our position at time f is also 0. So let's go ahead and take a look at the implications of those two pieces of data. So velocity at time f is going to be negative 16 times f plus v naught, our initial velocity, and that's supposed to equal 0. Our position at time f is equal to negative 8 times f squared plus v naught times f, and that, that's supposed to equal 200. So notice that we have two equations and two unknowns. Our two unknowns are the initial velocity and this final time. So what can we do? Well, we can use strategies that we learn in algebra, strategies such as substitution, 
to help us solve this system of equations. And as I look at this system of equations, I'm thinking working with that first equation and solving for V naught seems like an easy path to follow. I would simply add 16F to both sides of that equation. So V naught would equal 16 times F. And then I would take that information and I would substitute it into my second equation. And if I did that, I would have negative 8F squared plus, now I'm replacing V naught with 16F times F equals 200. So I have negative 8F squared plus 16F squared equals 200. And negative 8F squared plus 16F squared gives me 8F squared equals 200. Dividing both sides of this equation by 8, we get F squared equals 25. And then solving for F, technically we'd get F equals plus or minus the square root of 25, which is plus or minus 5 seconds. However, in the context of this problem, that negative 5 seconds has no meaning. So the t final time when the car comes to a stop is at 5 seconds. So the car travels 200 feet in 5 seconds. Now with this, we can find that initial velocity. Notice that we have here that V naught is equal to 16 times F, and V naught is that exactly that initial velocity. So in our initial velocity at time zero, or V naught, is equal to 16 times F, which is 16 times 5, which is 80 feet per second. So we see that the car traveled at a velocity of 80 feet per second. So interpreting our results here, we see that the car was traveling at a velocity of 80 feet per second when it hit the brakes and traveled 200 feet in five seconds. I hope you find this helpful.